The town is called Kalu, Connecticut, K-A-L-E-W. It's a little landlocked town about uh, 30 miles east of Norwich. It's a little mill town. Uh, and it's been on my list for some time. Uh, almost as soon as I got here, within about 36 hours, I did pick up on something. I don't know if it really means anything, but when I used to live in, in Brooklyn, and uh, I noticed this in beach towns also, you kind of become aware during the day and late at night of this this faraway hum, and what, it, what you're hearing is just the residual energy of faraway traffic that's constant. In Brooklyn, it was from a bridge far away. Of course, the ocean it's, it has its own sort of low roar, and my second night in Kalu, I was laying there in the only motel in town, laying there in the room, and I, I kind of heard it. I began to become aware of it. And it is, in fact, always there in Kalu, but there's nothing in or around the town that could possibly be making that sound. And I, I sometimes I hear it, sometimes I don't. I, it could be completely meaningless, but there's, there's other reasons that Kalu was on my radar that I came here. For example, there in the last uh, Two and a half years, there have been eight homicides in Kalu. Now that number alone is not terribly out of the ordinary with a town of this size that would be considered somewhat economically depressed. But the strange thing, the outlier thing about that statistic is that not a single one of the homicides has ever actually been solved. No arrests. The the old uh, old bit of uh, common knowledge that uh, victims are usually known to their assailants may not have as much weight here in a place like Kalu. The other statistic, of course, is that the population has been declining 10% per year for the last five years, which is really extraordinary. There's not quite the uh, economic condition here that would cause such an exodus, uh, nor is there enough crime. It, it's, uh, they've been scratching their heads over it. The people are leaving, they've been leaving en masse, and uh, it's, it's become a real crisis situation. So something is happening here, clearly there's something happening here. Uh, tonight, I'm just walking around. I've been here, this is my fourth night here. I've decided to uh, document some of the stranger graffiti that I've come across. I went down to the pharmacy on Patterson Street and got myself a little notebook and now I'm, I'm transcribing. It's pretty late, although there's still an occasional car that will go by here. Um, the very first one I saw, the first bit of graffiti that stood out, almost as soon as I got into town, there's a, a little park, a little park square uh, near, uh, I think it's City Hall, and it's got a little, little Civil War cannon on a green lawn and so forth, but on a bench, someone had uh, painted the words, They Only Creep at Night. Um, a little later on, I, um, I was walking down a little side road. There was a, a abandoned bus there and some reeds and spray painted on very big letters on the side of that were the words, Every star is a watching eye. Um, maybe the most disturbing one, and actually I can... I can get to it here if I just walk uh, to the end of this block. I can stand pretty much right in front of it. What I'm looking at, it, it's some sort of uh, some sort of public works uh, building. It's a little squat brick thing uh, surrounded by brick security fence. Not very serious security fence. I'm not sure. Some sort of water treatment location. Just a single light on, but. Uh, 
the painted words here very, very prominent. They say, there will be a cool assembly. And I've seen this phrase, um, oh, I've seen it in Point Pleasant, and one other place that I don't want to talk about right now, but that's really stirred something in me. And you can tell that uh, these three bits of graffiti were done by different people. It's fairly obvious. There's more, especially that last one. It's kind of concerning. Uh, but the most problematic incident happened just yesterday. Uh, I was sitting outside on the sidewalk. There's a little coffee shop slash gift shop uh, right on Main Street. And I was uh, having some coffee, just sitting there reading the local paper from Norwich. And uh, there was a bit of a fender bender right in the intersection of Main and Kunzertown Road. Uh, it's one of the few intersections in Kalud that actually has a stoplight. I think I've counted six. And uh, the two drivers got out to examine the damage, very minor. It was a man in one car and a woman in the other. The conversation became a bit heated and extended. They were sort of blocking the intersection at this point, and uh, little by little, cars would pull up to the intersection and stop. They couldn't really get around. And each time, the driver of that vehicle would get out, and they would just watch. And after about five or ten minutes, there were eight or nine cars stopped in this intersection. All the drivers got out, stood at the driver's side door of their vehicles, and just looked as the two people involved in the fender bender talked and then I don't know what happened but the two drivers just stopped talking to each other and just fell utterly silent and there was no no talk no whisper amongst all the other drivers they didn't approach and I sat and I looked and it was almost as if time had stopped for these people some sort of cloak that couldn't be seen, settled over the entire intersection. No one moved, no one spoke. They, everyone just seemed to be observing each other with their eyes. And this went on for about 15 or 20 seconds and uh, I actually stood up, began to walk forward. But then the spell sort of snapped. The male driver and the woman driver got in their cars and they began to drive off in opposite directions. Everyone else in the intersection got in their own vehicles. And in about 45 seconds, the intersection was clear again and regular life returned to Kalu. Uh, I've never actually seen anything quite like that. That moment had a very different feel than, uh, than any I've been used to. So my plan was to stay here another couple of days and really begin to talk to the townspeople, especially about this exodus. I'm just trying to listen, trying to listen for that sound, that faraway sound, sort of above the insects, but kind of behind it. From the air, the creek looked like a paintbrush. It snaked and wound through clots of trees, aspen bark and birch, the full deck of pines. And then the red band of hollow bridge gathered the stream and water fanned out soon after, tumbling whitely over limestone rocks. Folks would go all the time on the slick stone steps, despite being warned not to and there were accidents every year and broken bones, and once in a while someone died. There were stories of weird sudden winds near the bridge. Over the limestone tiers, people would sometimes report being shoved, as if some wild hands came up behind them and pushed. It couldn't be stopped, though, helped. 
Nothing could keep them, the town, away from the falls, the bleeding stream. The steps of it spread out like a royal court. There were gatherings there, celebrations, little fires. Just off the bridge was the mill, its old catwalks over river rocks like wooden spines. And if you kept following the curved road past, you reached downtown, what there was of it. There remained just one traffic light where cars might conceivably back up, at the widest cross of street by the tall church. When snow came, first in quilts of clouds and a breath, smoothing edges and corners in the cold gray night, when the blue ice was still fragile as sugar on wet spoons, the light made the grounds of the church and the panes pulse and glow like a bloody hearth. There was the laundromat. Its narrow windows bore the steam of lemon freshness, of ivory rains, the dust-like screen trap fur invisible to the human eye till spring sun, thunking sleepers, the tick and slide of metal snaps and loose coins, soapy, fibrous dryer sheets over the linoleum squares like ghosts, winged paper cups, humming machine, golden bullion sand. The diner had a different steam, but usually just when it was cold, burnt coffee on their round plates, sprayed with bleach, never truly clean. Would you ever want it to be? Gravy in little bowls, syrup in slides. It insisted on being open all the time, but that's how a diner should be, believed the owner, still alive. What if someone comes and they're hungry or they just need a place to sit, he said. I like doing that, giving them that rest. Then the bank, which still gave lollipops and smelled like desks. The drugstore, with a beautiful outsized soda counter, lovingly preserved, wiped down constantly, babied like a jewel. A local family kept a few apartments over the barber shop and the shoe store, and most of them were occupied through most of the year, with some grainy fluctuation like any mercurial space. The residential district rose gently behind the bar, pavement ceasing two blocks up, and the houses were mostly white, but some had been painted blue and brown and ochre, and the streets were unkept, and there were puddles and rocks and night crawlers in the dirt, wood stoves waiting for dead corn. The mill made warmth and smoke and feet and pens throughout the year. But when the moon turned chimney orange and the store brought in the plastic flags from the sidewalk and hung the autumn cats and pumpkins on their belled door and the apples and straw bales filled the houses with sweet, the town had a thing that scared. Strange half there, something in the pastures and wells, in the tool shed rakes, in the kitchen drawers. Oh, <laughs> well, I myself have stopped somewhere, kind of. Um, <laughs> unusual, I, I guess, I, um, it's a place that, that always just gave me a strange feeling. I'd never stopped here, but uh, at a certain time in my life, I uh, would dr drive past, drive past it frequently, and it's on, uh, it's 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 right off of the highway, in a certain spot, kind of between between areas where you. Um, you know, on either side, you've you've kind of driven down out of um, higher mountain uh, passes, and then there's a kind of a, a rolling sort of clearing for for miles. You can still see the mountains, um, but they've kind of um, they're they seem they seem to be uh, distant. Uh, you can still usually see snow on them. 
uh, even in even in the summer. And um, you know, it's one of these places that I, I think is more you know it's more in between. You know what I mean? It's like you. Um, it's always <laughs> it's always on the way. It's between where you come from and where you're going. Um, and it just, you know, for me, it just never seemed like a good time to stop. It, it always, um, <laughs> I, I, I just always got a strange feeling. It was, it was both a little bit frightened of it and drawn to it. <laughs> I thought, well, I'm, I'm going to stop today. I, I, it's my first evening here. I've obtained a little room above, oh, the, uh, so that's it. It's <laughs> the general store. Uh, you know, uh, they, uh, this town is so uh, small. There's not even really a main uh, street. You know that you can branch out from. It's it's really kind of more of a circle. <laughs> it's it's a, it's kind of an unpaved uh, circle uh, with a few businesses. Um, there's this this general store, you know, a, a couple of the buildings, they've really taken pains to kind of preserve this old-timey uh, mountain town mining uh, <laughs> vibe. But it's, it's on such a small scale that, I mean, it just ends up being fairly bizarre. Like, there's just this kind of... Uh, well, for instance, there's a little park off the... Off the um, uh, off the circle, <laughs> across from the general store with the wide porch, uh, and uh, oh, you know, I think the word mercantile is splashed about a little bit. There's a um, there's a park. Uh, I guess I, I'm not sure who this is for children. It's got a, a few <laughs> fixtures of of mining equipment that are kind of, just kind of creepily miniaturized. I'm not sure what for, <laughs> but for who for. I see no, you know, um, I'm actually kind of walking around the outer perimeter right now. Instead of even technically a town, this this place uh, is called a, a, it's a census designation. <laughs> Uh, well, it has, it has, I think, about 70, 70 people here, um, so it's, it's, it's quite diminutive, but there are a couple of, of things that I know about the history, not very, not very much, um, there, uh, is a, a, a poet that, that I love who wrote a beautiful, a beautiful poem about this, about this town, I'd always thought of that whenever I would drive by uh, and never stopped. And I know there were some uh, there were some murders here some years back. Uh, just kind of a random affair. Someone got off a bus and killed killed a a, a couple seemingly for no reason. <sighs> I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure what to do with myself now. It's just, it's getting dark, and, um, well, I, before, before I go, I, there, there is one thing that, that I, I, that has struck me about, about the town, and that is, there are a lot of, you know, I want to say pieces of sculpture, uh, but many, many of them are, um, it's kind of these flat metal silhouettes that, you know, are kind of, a you know, rusted looking. And they have their, their, their any number of these silhouettes. There, there are men, there are beasts, and they're kind of placed um, throughout, throughout the streets and fields in this way. Where, um, <laughs> like for instance, I'm, I'm right by this one, where I, I, I didn't notice it. I swear I did not notice it until I was looking at a photograph that I took of this circle. And then I saw this human, this dark human figure, uh, just standing in the trees. And yeah, there's something about these things that are like they create these just these 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 these, these dark these black these shadowed silhouettes in the middle of everything, um, in the middle of a lawn. Um, there are two two buffalo um, facing one another as if to as if to do battle. There are human shapes, 
um, several over by uh, the, the post the post office, which is kind of a um, it's this lovely sort of building. I, I guess the 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 man that this town was named after. Um, I guess was po- was postmaster here, and they seem to revere this and take it very seriously. The post office building is small and kind of lovingly preserved. Um, there's like a <laughs> there's a, a fly fishing shop. There is um, there's a gun and ammo shop. You know everything you might need to <laughs> to keep driving out to the scapegoat mountains south of here. Um, but I, th- these these cutouts, it, there's something about them. They're not, you know what I mean? Like they're not, they're like not fully sculptures. They're these sort of paper doll shapes almost. Um, only if you're viewing them from a squared angle do they appear in their intended scale. But if you catch the views of these kind of from the side a little bit, they're... Uh, they transform into these um, sort of, uh, I don't know, really eerily thin uh, presences. Uh, there's, there's, there's something, there's something about this place I have heard of. Um, well, so you have the the, the flat uh, sculptures that um, <laughs> are, are are only really. Um, Digestible visually from from a precisely square angle, and anything um, outside of that narrow that narrow measurement, uh, things just don't seem right. Uh, there's that, and then there's also the strange kind of miniaturization of of, of things here, and the um, like. For instance, there's a as I was driving into town, I had to stop uh, and look at this. There is a just a, a fence post uh, by the road, and um, <laughs> there's there's a, a a birdhouse placed on it, and it it just looks very strange because it's it's you know a, a birdhouse on this fence post, and just behind it is this wide expanse of fields. Um, then there's this one there's a there's a strange kind of small billboard sign that has been placed so strangely out in the middle of this f- the field, out in the middle of the area of this field. It's, it's apparently intended for people to see it from the highway uh, <laughs> and be an enticement to stop, but, uh, but you, because of this placement, you can't really see it from the highway. I, I, it's all just very... The placement of things, the size of things, the scale of things, the way things relate to each other... It just seems very, it seems very off kilter here. You know, it doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't seem as if you're off in, in a dangerously isolated place. I mean, it's right off the main highway. Um, and it's, it's, it's right there, and yet it's not, you know? I, I did know before I came that this has been, this has been called a thin place. The, you know, my limited understanding of a thin place is this idea that um, there there are spots in our world where the membrane or the uh, the demarcation between our world and other worlds is thinner than thinner than it is in other locations. And you know, I'd, maybe that's because the thread is stitched more loosely, or or um, the skin is literally thinner here. Or maybe there are even ruptures or or tears. You know, I think of these places as um, places where things can appear and disappear without any uh, apparent physical logic. Um, anyhow, I'm going to go over to... Um, I'm going to walk over to uh, the diner um, soon. Uh, I think I should make sure that I'm fed. I, I don't know what kind of a night I have ahead of me.
Off in the field, the sign had a lonely job. An arrow pointed in to some buildings, dwarfed by weeds and grasses and dark posts. It gave the name of the town and listed six services that, if one were to pull off the highway, could be gotten there. It was a strange sight, a quiet one. There was something about it. If one did decide to turn, it might actually take a couple of tries to choose the right road. There were two, forking off after the sharp south exit. And though they both led to the same place, more about this below, it was disorienting. And perhaps that's where it started, this slide, this tremble, something beneath the feet, some hiss. Both the roads looked wrong. One was a sly gravel extending from the diner's lot, and it's worth saying that it sat a bit higher than each other thing there, like a crown. But if you went around behind it, toward the long swinging gate pasture and the gold husks of trucks, it proved to be the more direct way. The other road led to houses among the piney trees. They were thin here, but building as you chased the mountains, crumbling up and shoving all around. They moved more and more in each day. But it would still be years and years before everything met, before it came together and cleared. Because even if you took the road, believing you were heading away from the town, from town with the handful of services you might badly need, when you were upon the houses and the black and straw-colored dogs and pinto cats ran through the pointed fences and the dead pianos and the thatches of sticks, you would start to notice something, an incongruity, a slip in the scale. If you went on through and kept going, you could sidestep this effect, the unease, the low sounds coming from somewhere indistinct. You could go south to the scapegoats or east to the belts. But say you didn't, and your cooling car rolled slowly in, and you passed the post office covered in tile. And they were pale as a swimming pool and square and cellophane blue. The Brand Bar Museum, prim and gray as a suburban two-story, with a tooth-white trim and wagon wheels faced carefully along the porch. There's a little suggestion of locomotive, of train. Old fog peeling stars. You'd see the VFD, the hay. If this were to happen, you'd see them, the cutouts, silent, flat, rusted, rue dark, vigils through the coming snow. The poet said, dust that clouded your last drunk dream thickens in this degrading wind. Not all dreams slide away. Not every river travels south, whatever maps might claim. This is where you stop. Even here, the women smell you out. Wind this wild has always brought them freaks. I think I'm actually going to get out of here tonight. I, I just, I don't have the kind of resistance I used to have for this kind of place. And it is a thin place. I, I just have no doubt about it. Um, just not sure how thin. Sounds like a good plan. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think I'll be all right where I am for another couple days. We'll see. The weather up here is turning bad. Anyway, do you hear that wind? Yeah. <laughs> You're coming through fine, though. I just, I just 
just have to remember where I left my car. I finally see someone over there in the street, the end of my street. He's uh, waving at me. Strange, I have someone at the end of my street too. I'm not, we're, I'm not sure where she came from. Back. I guess that's the polite thing to do. My person is waving back at me too. Wait. What do you have on right now? What do I have on? Um, jeans, black shirt. Button up black shirt. Dark hair. Do me a favor, just raise your right hand very slowly. Okay. Yeah, we have something going on here. I'm raising my right hand slowly now. Jesus. Is there a, a, a green van parked about halfway up your street? No. You've got reddish hair, I'm guessing. I can't quite tell. Take, take two steps to your left, and I'll do the same. There's just no question here. What do you think is happening? I don't know. No elementary school in your street and no, no green van? No, our streets don't match. Do you think we should walk toward each other? No. No, don't. Stop where you are. Okay. Turn around. Walk away. Just keep going. Yeah, I, I think that's probably what we should do. I'm hanging up now. I'll call you in a few weeks. Right, good night.